everyone hope you guys are well so i just wanted to come on really quick and just answer a question that i get so often from a lot of you um on here and also just some of my friends so i just want to make this quick video to kind of help answer that question for anybody else who's possibly interested um in beginning that journey of therapy so a lot of people ask me so how do you find a therapist or how do you go about finding um the right fit for you in regards to your journey so just a few things to know i do have my masters um, in marriage and family therapy so again my background is in marriage and family therapy again these are just my thoughts my suggestions and you take what you need and then you know adjust as best as possible the first thing that i think anybody needs to start doing when they do decide to make that step is to really congratulate yourself that's a huge step um, i know that the society that we live in really does not encourage people to go to therapy so congratulations to you i'm a first generation Ghanaian, and i know that it's often seen as a taboo to even acknowledge the fact that you have a therapist let alone have even gone so um, congratulations to you i'm really excited for for you to start this journey towards you know healing or whatever it is that you are trying to gain from this journey you're about to embark on so congratulations to you second thing i really like to tell people to look at is one what kind of therapist are you looking for right um for me i'm a christian i'm a believer so that was the first and the most important thing for me when i began my search um for a therapist so i wanted somebody who was a christian and also shared the same belief system that i had in regards to just how we looked at the bible i believe in christ the holy spirit all those things that was really important for me in picking my therapist the person who understood my culture and my background so i wanted somebody who was african um specifically to a lot of things that had to do with culture that i know i still had to process within myself and then um i wanted to make sure that the person was definitely just in line with that part of who i was so again the question for you is um do you want to see african-american do you want to see a caucasian do you want to see indian it may not matter to you and that's fine as well but for me i really wanted to see somebody who was african um born and uh, at least a, a descendant um and was connected to the culture and really understood some of the cultural issues um and some of the cultural positives as well so that i can kind of have that conversation as well so that was the thing for me and then do you want to see a male or a female um do you have a preference do you not care and then you also want to ask yourself um does it matter whether i see a licensed professional counselor or i see a marriage and family therapist um they're different licensures under the profession so i would say definitely do a little bit of research i'll just put a short blurb um in the comments below so you kind of know the breakdown of each type and what they kind of do i um by training i'm a marriage and family therapist and i i'm gonna sound a little biased here and that's okay but i believe that with our um Without specialization, we focus more on relationships, systems, how those things affect the person as a whole. So it was really important for me that at least I saw somebody who at least had done some work in that um, or had that licensure designation. So that's my thing um, again. But honestly, you can see anybody that you want to see who is licensed or working towards licensure that um, has been practicing or meets any of your other requirements as well. So that's definitely fine. And then ask yourself, how am I going to pay for this, right? Um, there's some people that money is not, money is not an issue. They can pay straight out of pocket. And then there are those who I've heard, you know, are really hesitant to take the step of therapy because of the cost that comes with this. Therapy can be expensive. Um, it can range from, depending on what area you are. I'm in the DMV and if you're paying out of pocket, you're paying either between 150 to 190 if the person is licensed. It is a little bit lower if they're going through training or not licensed. So ask yourself those. Another thing you want to consider is um your insurance right the so some policies will cover your insurance your coverage or cost of therapy at 100 i know that my company we cover it at 100 you don't pay anything for therapy it's free night night i mean it better be because the work we do is stressful sometimes you need somebody to talk to but outside of that um look at your insurance coverage to determine okay is this covered under my insurance and if it is how much do i have to pay that's number one and then number two you also want to check with the therapist that you're choosing to see because some of them will tell you they won't take insurance um but they can um bill you and then you can bill your insurance and then so you pay them and then they'll give you a receipt and then you can go 
after the payment from your insurance company. So that's also something that you can consider doing, okay? So definitely one kudos to you for taking that step. I'm so, 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 so proud of you for taking that step. That's so important too. What kind of therapist do you want to see in terms of, do you have a, a faith requirement? Do you have a gender requirement? Do you have a race requirement? Definitely thinking about that as well. And then, um, do you care about licensure? Do you care about what type of license they have? Um, does it matter to you? If not, that's fine too. And then how are you going to pay for this? Are you going to pay cash? You can pay insurance. And then is your therapist going to take that insurance as well? Okay. Just a few tips. One thing I will do when I find therapists, just want to, again, even though I know it's covered hundred percent, I want to call my health insurance to make sure that this therapist is in coverage um, and that it will be paid for. So it's in network and not out, out, out of network and all that good jazz that comes to insurance stuff. But once I call and they say, hey, it's in network and you're good to go, then I will call the therapist. And I'll say, hey, I'm interested in, you know, starting working with you. Um, what's your availability? And then go from there. Honestly, before your first session, most times a therapist will send you a whole bunch of paperwork to complete. Um, right now with COVID, everything is virtual. So a lot of appointments are tele a tele telehealth appointments. <laughs> which means that you can basically see the person from anywhere. I've had sessions in my car. I wasn't driving, but like from anywhere. Um, so that is that. But you have a bunch of paperwork to fill out and then you go for your first session. Your first session, honestly, just really getting to know you, um, why you're there for therapy. And sometimes you don't know the why and that's okay too. Um, it's just really to kind of figure it out. I always tell people that, you know, want to make sure that in the process of therapy, that this is somebody you can walk that journey with, right? Um, I always tell people you can fire your therapist, but here's a caveat. Don't just go firing your therapist because they've said something that you don't like that you really need to hear. That's a whole different topic I don't have time to talk about today. But really like, you know, make sure that it's a good fit for you and that you can really walk that journey with this person in regards to, you know, whatever it is that you went to therapy for. And sometimes, honestly, like I said earlier, you may walk into that place and not know why you're there. Or you may even think you know why you're there and by session two, three, four, you're like, well, we just unzipped a whole bunch of other stuff that I did not really think about a process. Um, for me, the faith part, like I said, was very important to me because um, it, it's who I am. And just in sessions with my therapist, the way he is able to, you know, weave scripture and God's, you know, promises and just how we are as people and how I'm supposed to view who I am through the lens of the one who made me. It, it's a refresher and it's really important for me. So I would definitely say consider those things as well. For those who um, want to do couples therapy, I think sometimes I see this where like one couple, one um, partner wants to go, the other doesn't want to go, the other is forcing it, it becomes a thing. Um, you sit in therapy and the other one is just looking at you like, why are we here? I don't want to be here. I think it's really important that either the both of you make that conscious decision to go together or, um, you really decide, would it be better for me to go on my own? Um, it's funny because I have seen relationships and marriages change, you know, even if only one partner is sitting in the love seat, right? So I think that is also very possible where sometimes you go into therapy because it's your marriage, but then you leave and it's like all these gems and knowledge open up about yourself and things that you need to work on that's caused the marriage to act crazy um as well and as a believer i honestly believe that praying that god changes the heart of your partner to kind of see the importance of the work that you're doing um and why therapies needed is good but making sure that you guys definitely 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 make that agreement to go together um, and if the other person is not willing i would still say you go or if you're interested in a therapy process i would definitely say go ahead and do it i would encourage it all right and if you have any questions or you need further explanation just shoot me a message i'm gonna attend to my kids now because that's the crying in the background they're probably fighting over something be safe guys